Ahoy! Welcome aboard Half as Gas, my pipeline repair ship. Here's the deck, the galley, and the pressurized VW bus size 2 where four of my guys live at twice a bike tire's air pressure for a month and talk like ducks. Cool, right? Yeah, if they go through this door, they die instantly. What's that? Yes, it's voluntary. Yes, it's real. Right now, a handful of people around the world are living in tubes like this one and do construction gigs at the bottom of the ocean. It's literally the world's highest pressure job, and it's called saturation diving. Saturation divers work at depths below 165 feet, or 50 meters, repairing offshore wells, installing platforms, laying pipes, cleaning debris, you name it. But when you dive down deep enough, the pressure of the water around you starts to cause problems. Air generally is about 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% uh, elemental potpourri, I guess. And under pressure, that nitrogen starts dissolving into your blood and tissues, which is fine, except that if you come back to normal pressure too quickly, all that nitrogen expands into bubbles, which sounds whimsical, but feels like your blood is exploding and can kill you instantly. This is known as decompression sickness, or the bends, and the only way to prevent it is coming up from high pressure dives nice and slow to leak nitrogen out gradually. If you're 250 feet underwater for an hour, this would take five hours of ascent. That's a problem if you're like me, i.e. an owner of an oil company. Do I want to waste that much time decompressing my crew every day or every hour? What about the shareholders? That's where sat diving comes in. See, once upon the 1930s, scientists learned that there's a maximum amount of inert gas, like nitrogen, that the body can store. And once you reach that point, you can stay at that pressure for days and weeks on end as long as you do one long decompression at the end of it all. Think of it like this. You fill up three cups of water for different amounts of time. But when you pour them out, these two take the same amount of time. That's the basic idea of sat diving. If we keep the divers at pressure, even when they're not in the water, we can save a ton of decompression time by just doing it at once. And if you're wondering why literally anyone would agree to this, I'll note that sat divers can make as much as $1,400 a day or anywhere from two to six times what unsaturated divers do. For their whole 28 day or more gig, sat divers have to live in a special super pressurized habitat that weighs several tons and sits either at depth or on a support vessel like mine, but it would be faster to get home from the moon than to walk from here to here without dying. Inside, the air pressure can be as high as 333 pounds per square inch to match the depth of, for example, a 750-foot dive. For comparison, you're probably sitting in less than 15 psi of pressure right now, and your ears would pop if it changed by, like, 2 psi. It's like 65 psi in a bike tire. You enter the SAT system, called storage for those in the know, through a porthole into this room, the wet pot. The wet pot is your portal to storage, your stortle, and to the diving bell, another pressurized room about the size of a shower that detaches and takes you down to the job site. You'll head down in a team of two or three, with everyone connected to the bell, and by extension, the mothership, by an umbilical cord that runs gas, electricity, communication lines, video feeds, breathable air, and hot water to keep you warm in below freezing waters. One person will stay in the bell throughout to monitor all those systems, the others don their helmets, called pats by those in the know, and work for six straight hours. Then it's back to the bell to tag in the other team while you chill in the living space. Here we have a beautiful table and chairs, and nothing else. Then through a curtain, the bedroom. Four bunk beds, six if you're in a mansion. On American jobs, you choose your bed by seniority. Elsewhere, you draw for spots. Where's the bathroom? It's the wet pot. When you use it, you have to request a flush from someone on the mothership. That person opens up a valve, which allows you to open two other valves that get your, um, waste into a holding tank, then mixed in with the rest of the mothership system. For complicated missions, there could be multiple SAT systems connected via their wet pot slash bathrooms so that they have enough teams to be working in shifts 24-7. All SAT systems are monitored by a life support team living in normal air pressure, making sure the divers don't die an unthinkable death. To that end, the habitat is cameraed up like the Love Island Villa, though unlike the Love Island Villa, SAT systems have a camera in the toilet. The support staff helps you flush, does your laundry, arranges for your food, and monitors the humidity, temperature, depth, air pressure, and amount of oxygen in there. Most importantly, they're in charge of your air supply. 
You'll be breathing a special air cocktail called Heliox pumped down from the support vessel, which has less nitrogen and more oxygen than standard air. Heliox prevents you from getting something called nitrogen narcosis, which makes you disoriented, and as a bonus, due to all the helium, makes you talk like this the whole time you're in storage. This is fun. Quack, quack. I'm a sat diver. And now I'm a YouTuber. But if you're a sat diver, here's your packing list. It's not long since you don't have much space. Also because stuff like tools, food, new books, whatever can get to you from the ship without some crazy long compression. It takes like a minute or two through an airlock. Seriously, for you to get to your work site, you live in a tube for a month, but your tools, they come down in like a bucket. Once the hatch is sealed, you start what's called blowdown, where the habitat gets pumped with helix for several hours until you reach the desired pressure. Blowdown is hot and humid, your ears pop like crazy, and it makes your joints hurt because your cartilage shrinks. And just as a reminder in case you forgot, this is real. People really do this. On Earth. Breathing all that Heliox eventually makes you cold, the tube is kept at around 90 degrees Fahrenheit or over 32 degrees Celsius. And the job is so physically demanding that you'll eat four meals for about 6,000 calories a day, plus a bunch of multivitamins. You pick those meals from a menu that gets passed through the airlock, and since pressure mutes your taste buds, many drench everything in hot sauce. Besides that, life is sort of normal just small. You hang out with the team you're living with, do six hours of work daily, pass your laundry through the airlock, chat on the phone to anyone who can tolerate your voice, read, play on the internet if you've got it. You know, life. Just in a tube. When the job's done, it's time to decompress. A process much longer than blowdown. The general equation is that with decompression, or desat, time equals feet of depth divided by 100 plus 1. So if you're at 700 feet, for example, you can expect at least a Hanukkah's worth of desat, though it can take longer. Desat is uncomfortable for basically the same reasons the bends are. But while feeling like garbage is normal, you have to be careful to make sure you don't feel too garbage. If someone feels too sick and is potentially crossing into full-on Ben's territory, the whole habitat gets its pressure cranked back up until they're okay again, then they restart DSAT from there. And yes, it's annoying, but not as annoying as dying. Once DSAT is done, the divers climb back out into the real world, where their fingertips will unwrinkle in about two days. And that's how we fix pipelines. Just four to six people who are brave beyond advisement, living in a hot, pressurized tube, quacking like ducks while a boat full of people watch to make sure they don't die on the toilet. It's, uh, pretty weird. But I guess technically not weirder than what I do. Just harder and more important. Speaking of jobs, did you know I co-founded a streaming service, aka this video sponsor Nebula? Picture it. Tons of your favorite creators, all in one place, ad-free, and getting to make our dream projects. The kind of stuff that neither YouTube finances or big Hollywood movie studios tend to fund. For me, that means stuff like The Logistics of X, a series of in-depth video essays about everything from commercial fishing to search and rescue, The Getaway, a reality competition show where we tricked six other creators into sabotaging themselves across the American West, and of course, Jetlag the Game. Which, sure, you can't find on YouTube, but you can find the next episode up early on Nebula, along with our Nebula-exclusive pilot season, Crime Spree. And that's just what I've got going on on Nebula. But if you sign up, you won't just get my passion projects, you'll get everyone's, from short films to long films to news to video essays and more. With my link, you can get 40% off, just $36 for a year or $3 a month. So head to nebula.tv slash HAI stat to check all that out, and thanks in advance.